Uh, yes, we are on live. Let's bring the Thursday, March 4th, Webster Town Board meeting to order. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dolly, can you do roll call? Supervisor Flaherty. Here. Councilman Cahill. Here. Councilwoman Wynn. Aye. Town Attorney Janessa. Present. Okay. Well, the first order of business tonight is an honor ceremony for the special police who previously were the auxiliary police, I think, prior to 1998. Seven. Okay. So I'm going to move to the podium and ask... Uh, All right. Chief Kohlmeyer, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to hand the baton to you on this, okay? All right, thank you, everyone. Um, as we've discussed at, at several meetings now, um, we've had a uh, very solid group of volunteers that have uh, had dedicated service to our community for decades. Uh, starting in 1953, uh, under the Civil Defense Act, uh, the town of Webster formed uh, the Webster Auxiliary Police. Uh, and they continued uh, to serve uh, up until 1997 when Monroe County chose to disband the auxiliary police uh, under their authority. So at that time, the town of Webster created uh, the Webster Special Police, uh, which was a continuation of service where uh, those volunteers uh, performed traffic control and crowd uh, control duties uh, at most of our public events. So they're a very uh, public facing uh, element of the town uh, and it came to be a, a great asset for us to um, utilize and uh, deliver service through. Um, as everybody knows from our meetings, uh, we ran into some issues when it came to coverage and uh, some of the legalities of uh, their uh, operating authority. Uh, so uh, earlier this year, the town uh, disbanded that unit and we're still looking for alternatives to provide that service. Um, but that doesn't r reduce or diminish the contribution that these individuals made to the town. Uh, and we want to make sure that we recognize that. Um, so on behalf of the uh, current special police and uh, a very longtime member of the auxiliary police, uh, my dad, Gene Kohlmeyer, is going to step forward to receive uh, the certificate on behalf of uh, the members past and present. So, uh, like I said, the auxiliary police were formed in uh, 1953. Uh, my father joined that group in 1965 uh, and has been a continuous member operating uh, both with the auxiliary police and the special police since that time. So, uh, through most of my childhood growing up, uh, the auxiliary police and the fire department were part of uh, daily life and daily conversation. So, um, it's with pride that I give him his certificate. Oh, thank you very much. So the other certificate that uh, I'm going to present him with is on behalf of uh, the members uh, past and present. Uh, so uh, certificate of recognition presented on behalf of the residents of the town of Webster to the members past and present who have volunteered countless hours of public service to our community, serving in the Webster Auxiliary Police uh, from 1953 to 1997 and the Webster Special Police from 1997 to 2022. Uh, but before I turn the mic over to him to say a couple words, um, it is also our intention to take that uh, group certificate to commemorate everybody's collective uh, effort and make that a uh, permanent plaque at the town hall. Uh, so once that's complete, that'll be hung up uh, to commemorate the, the service of the citizens uh, to the town. Thanks. I just want to say a, a few words that uh, it's been Quite a uh, journey from 1953 and my joining in 65. Uh, we've done an awful lot for the town. I think we were one of the reasons why the town motto really says where life is worth living. We supported an awful lot of uh, the police activities, but more than that, it also was the community activities. So we directed traffic for carnivals and all sorts of things. Uh, they're, we assisted with fires, uh, traffic control and whatnot. 
So we had a pretty good presence in the town as far as visibility for the special police. And I think uh, we really owe a lot to all of the members that over these years, dozens and dozens of them, who have spent their time volunteering in order to make this a, a better town to work and live in. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and I want to just thank Mr. Kohlmeyer. I know there's two Mr. Kohlmeyers here, but Dennis, Chief, I hope you are okay with me deferring to your father on this one. Because really, Gene, you really over the last eight months showed grace and so much common sense in the meetings that we were in and that we'll continue to be in to find the alternative uh, to a special event traffic control unit for the town into the future. Uh, and I really want to thank you for that. So uh, next up um, is the open to the floor portion of this meeting. And it actually is my favorite portion of the meeting because this is what local government uh, should be, uh, hearing from the people. Um, I get a kind of bummed out when this, this boardroom is empty. Well, it's not empty tonight, is it, Charlie? No. <laughs> so I'm not positive if everybody that's signed in um, intends to speak, but I'm going to just go in the order that they signed in. And certainly when I, when, I, when I name you, if you're like, I just thought I was signing in, I didn't intend to speak, by all means, you can tell us that too. But the first person who signed in tonight was Charlie Schreiber from the West Webster Fire Department. Charlie, do you want to speak? Yes, sir. Come on up. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am Fire Commissioner Charlie Schreiber from the West Webster Fire District, and I have a letter for the members of the town board from the district that I'd like to read, and then I have hard copies for uh, Ms. McGuire and the board members. Dear Mr. Supervisor, mm -hmm. the members of the town board, the West Webster Fire District provided ambulance service to the community for over 80 years. During that time, our goal was to provide the best care in the most cost-effective manner. Last year, after a comprehensive evaluation of our services and the EMS industry, the district determined that a different service model would provide better care in a more cost-efficient manner, and we stepped out of the ambulance transport service. The district secured a vendor to provide ambulance service without the need for subsidy or a tax district in the town of Webster. Subsequently, the town assumed control of service with its own vendor. The district is saddened to learn that six months after assuming control in the Webster portion of the fire district, the town's vendor is not financially viable, and the town board is contemplating a town-wide tax district to subsidize a major portion of, a of the ambulance operating costs, in addition to continued patient billing for ambulance services. The fire district does not support an additional tax for this purpose, and finds it unnecessary. In lieu of a tax district on the west side of town, we propose the town board grant the fire district authority to provide and manage ambulance service within the West Webster Fire District. Infrastructure and framework is already in place with our vendor to provide ambulance service from our gravel road station without the need for a tax district or subsidy from the town of Webster. With a fully detailed contract already in place, ambulances already within West Webster at our gravel road fire station, and a financially viable vendor with a CON to operate in the district, we can spare the community the significant tax hike currently under consideration. The district, along with Monroe County EMS leaders and the State Department of Health, are eager to assist the town board with strategic planning and sharing of data to work through this current challenge. We look forward to being part of the solution to provide the highest level of care in the most cost-effective manner without the need to raise taxes. Sincerely, the Board of Fire Commissioners of the West Webster Fire District. Um, 
on a personal note to Tom and John, Ginny and Patty and Mr. Abbott who are not here, the number one priority of the fire district is the safety and well-being of our community. We have no financial stake in who the vendor for EMS is in the town, absolutely none. My pay goes from zero to zero, no matter what you do, as does the rest of the fire district employees, firefighters and commissioners. So I urge you to consider, consider our proposal because that's really what's best, financially, logically, and practically. People are concerned with the best care in a timely manner, in a cost-effective um, manner. Not whose name is on the side of the ambulance or whose patch is on the arm. That stuff is petty politics. In public safety, we are all on the same team. Period, end of story. Um, to help make your decision going forward, I, I would urge you to talk to Tim Sopransky, who's the EMS coordinator for the county. He's the smartest guy in EMS in Western New York. His job is to help with situations like this. Um, the county has a contingency plan should any agency not be able to provide care. He will not let the citizens of Webster go without quality ambulance care, period. Uh, I would encourage you to talk to him about the Fitch study. With revised numbers, say that to be solvent, you need 1,300 transporting paying calls a year. Talk to him about the viability, the feasibility, and what the town's strategic plan is to get the best bang for our buck. Don't recreate the wheel to the tune of a million dollars. Use the resources that we have available. Um, and I would urge you to put politics over people because your lives, the lives of your family and everybody here. I think you meant you want us to put people over politics. I'm sorry, is that a, put, pe put people over Or that's a Freudian slip, we'll no, no, no. figure out. <laughs> well, no, no, sir. Yeah. I would urge you to put, put people over politics because ultimately your lives, your family's lives, everyone here's life, and my life depend on it. So thank you very much. Thank you, for Charlie. Your time. And you know what? I can tell you right now, because you said you're a retired commissioner, right? No, not yet. I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. Meetings to know, okay. Uh, I do plan on talking to Wes Webster about this whole situation. And I will say, as he's handing out, and we'll go to the next person, but I really like to make sure there's a t totality of information given to people. And Charlie, I appreciate what you just said, okay? But what he didn't say was that the award was to Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, okay? When you said you had an ambulance, all right, with no subsidy. Penfield Volunteer Ambulance right now gets $75,000 a year from Penfield, and they are asking for double that in 2023. So it's a little inaccurate to say that that ambulance company is not looking for subsidy. You're all set. I just told you that, and that's a fact, and I know that, so... I want to make sure everybody knows that, that when everybody goes up to the podium tonight, if it's about ambulance, there's no doubt that there is an issue here, and it's an issue that has to be looked at. Councilman Cale, you and I have had a lot of conversations on this. We're aligned on that. The yeah. means by which we get to what is the best final product, we might disagree on that, but we're aligned on that something has to be done. I will be talking to West Webster leadership about that, okay? Because I would imagine West Webster can have help with that because when they did get out of the ambulance business, they were able to divest about 450,000 off their budget. So they may be able to help us in this. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Now, I just have one, one question for you, Charlie, before you leave. I, Gentlemen, I came to make a statement, read a letter. You I'm did. I'm prepared to answer questions. That's okay. No, that's okay. No, no, no. And and I, and I, I just want to make sure it. that because it was a great letter, but there was some generic and some statements of no substance this, that, that, that aren't exactly true unless Penfield Ambulance is like, well, we won't ask for anything from Webster. We'll just balance the books on the back of Penfield's town government. So I just want to make sure facts are out there because this is one of these issues that everybody's got an agenda and they might intentionally or unintentionally only spin their side of the story. And my goal is to make sure, because I respect all of your intelligences, that you get the whole story and it's measured from both sides. Okay? Thank you, Charlie. Now, Andrew Chat, Andrew Chat, where is that gentleman? I bet you you aren't here to talk about the ambulance district, are you? 
Uh, not quite this evening, thank you. All right, I think I know. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I'm here today to discuss the designation of park districts and the maintenance, uh, the yearly maintenance. Um, I live in Briarwood Estates off of uh, Salt Road and Webster. Um, my research of these park districts began uh, October of 21, and I first spoke to the town and the comptroller. Uh, I understand through the town that there are 135 park districts scattered throughout Webster. Uh, and there are many different strategies within these communities how to maintain. So in my community, we don't have a strategy and I'm looking for a little bit of a better answer. Um, we would like a more formalized plan to maintain these park districts, whether it's just within our estates or throughout Webster. Um, through various email and phone communications, we found barriers to obtaining a way to maintain these districts, including unknown Webster departments mowing areas adjacent to waterways, Webster residents mowing park district products uh, adjacent to their own property while charging against the neighborhood tax pool. Other residents are mowing for free um, and uh, missing tax related information regarding Briarwood residents and how their uh, neighborhood is taxed. Um, I propose that we unify the district maintenance designations to be town controlled and maintained via the same collected taxes in each neighborhood as not to burden the entire town budget. The goal is not to raise the town budget. Uh, I understand there's more to it than just a simple snap of the fingers. Uh, until that time, I proposed a town generated proposal and town generated invoice form to include specific specifics such as the fact that resident contractor will be billing the town. These bills will be paid from our own personal park district tax pool, frequency of the service and the cost of the service anticipated for the year. Um, related to that, I also want to speak about some of the concerns I had with the agreement that is now on file from our neighborhood regarding the resident who is mowing a common area. Uh, when I began reviewing this in 2021, I was told that we needed at least 50% majority of the neighborhood would need to consent to whatever was agreed to to deal with the tax pool. Um, I inquired if there's any such documentation on a file, but there was not. In continuing my research earlier this year, May of 22, I discovered that no documentation continued to exist and nor was it ever requested after my conversation in October of 21. So the agreement that was submitted in June has very generic statements and does not include any of the following, which I feel is important for all the residents to know. There's no indication that he will be billing the town or that these bills will be paid from our own personal tax pool. There's no amount specified what he will be billing for each mowing, and there's no specific frequency identified which he'd be mowing. Um, the indication on the uh, agreement and proposal is that he just needs permission from the town to maintain. So of course, all the members who are mowing for free agreed, hey, this is a great deal, he's gonna mow. Um, even after discovering that no documentation existed, the town continued paying these invoices, um, which didn't have any resident confirmation of consent or showed how he arrived at the $75 for the mowing. Uh, I was told that it was up to me to discuss it with him, but I believe that since the town began paying him without anyone's knowledge, without any supporting documentation, and it continued even after all these facts were come to light, I feel the town must help take responsibility and discuss this. And speaking with a few of the Briarwood residents, they had no idea he was billing the town as it wasn't indicated on the form. Uh, when contractors submit proposals, I know there's parameters listed about labor, parts and material, time to complete, and total cost to the town. I understand that a highway maintenance contract is different than my little park district, but I am curious as to why the same steps were not followed to ensure the appropriate billing. So if it's possible, I feel that using the town to maintain these areas would be vastly easier than having 20, 30 contractors submitting invoices to the comptroller. I think using a common form for all of Webster would help eliminate some future issues as well if it identified specific parameters. So I appreciate your time allowing me to come speak to the board. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Andrew. <clears throat> and nice to put a face to the yeah. phone and the email and good points. Uh, next on the list is Jan Thompson. All righty. Yes, I am here to talk about ambulance service. Uh, I'm a retired senior citizen and I've lived in Webster for almost 25 years. 
I own several properties in Webster along with my family and among my daughters and granddaughters, they own approximately 10 residences in Webster. They're on vacation, they couldn't come and speak this week, so I'm speaking for them. We figured out what the proposed tax assessment would be. I believe it's 30 cents per assessed thousand. It's a pittance compared to the needed emergency services that are really needed in a town like Webster that is growing in leaps and bounds. Every time I drive down to Holt Road, there's another building going up, whether it be a medical building, a physician's building, another business, or another tract of homes, adding more and more people to the town, which requires more and more services, police, fire, and medical emergency services. I feel very passionate about it as I am on the board of NEQ and WEMS. And why did I choose to serve? I have no medical background, but I'm a re retired business owner. And personally, my parents were saved by NEQ. My mother had a severe stroke. They lived at Bay Wind. NEQ arrived within seven minutes and saved her life. After her rehab, she returned home with no residual effects. Three months later, my dad had a massive heart attack. Again, NEQ was there within, I'm gonna say maybe six minutes, because I timed it. Personally, I've had to have the ambulance come when I had pneumonia and I wasn't breathing properly. And they gave me oxygen and whisked me off to RGH. It all happened in a matter of 20 minutes. Why would we even question the small amount of dollars that we are requesting? We have more and more calls on a monthly basis. We have more and more political requirements to meet as an emergency medical service. And I'm very passionate that I feel that we need to approve this proposal. It's not for fun, it's not to make a profit, it's to continue to save lives in a very timely fashion. I personally do, as I live in West Webster, I would prefer not to have uh, my children who live on Basket Road make a phone call and have to wait 20, 25 minutes for somebody to show up. It's just not viable. So that's basically my, my concerns <coughs> and my support. And I guess the question is, I heard uh, Mr. Schreiber say that there are other plans in place. What are the town's alternative plans if for any reason we cannot respond as an, as an emergency medical service? Thank you. Thank Thanks, you Jan. very much. Okay, I hope I pronounce all these names correctly. Uh, Diana Halswasser? Did I say that correctly? Of course I said it, Brett. Yes, Diana, let me just lower this here. Basically, I could probably stand for the person who is new to all this process, who doesn't know one side, doesn't have a lot of information, but, um, and I think a lot of residents perhaps in Webster might be uh, similar to what I'm um, sort of confused about, but um, here's my 10th version of what I wrote today. Good evening and thank you for the privilege to speak at tonight's meeting. My name is Diana Holswasser. I married Mark Kaczynski, but I'm not switching from Holswasser to Kaczynski. So, <laughs> and this is my first time speaking to the Webster Town Board. With complete transparency, I haven't been involved in board meetings nor completely understand what entities or services my taxes are supporting. That's most definitely what I would refer to as shame on me. Certainly not an excuse, but my primary focus for 36 plus years, including days, nights, 
weekends and holidays, was managing a team of 450 employees for the majority of my 36 year career with this wonderful Rochester based company called Paychex. I started in 1984 when Paychex had only a couple thousand clients. Since the company was in its infancy, I had the once in a lifetime opportunity to observe and learn management skills from the best managers in the nation and perhaps even on a global business level at that time. Not, inten not intending to name drop, but I will. Um, I started when the company was so young. I did learn from Tom Golisano, Gene Policini, and my current business role model to this day, Marty Musi. That's enough about me. I had another paragraph. My husband said, this is not about you. <laughs> okay. By my business thought processes derived from my paychecks experience. Our first priority in 1984 and still remains the focus in 2022 is to provide our clients and their employees with exceptional service. I managed a budget for my department within the organization and at times had to rob Peter to pay Paul. I come here tonight with a clean slate, meaning I have no past grievances, no past issues, no past knowledge of what has transpired with Nequals. I am a newbie to this process, not for long. Um, Perhaps that is a benefit as I view issues with an unbiased and fresh perspective. The services provided by Webster Police Department, Webster Fire Department, and our NEQUALS EMS first responders are our greatest insurance policies in order to sustain our community. I haven't needed the police, but I'm sure glad they're there. I haven't required the services of our fire department, but I'm now cooking and my husband isn't. So, but I, <laughs> and I feel comfort knowing that when I do start cooking, they will be there. <laughs> but I have needed and desperately needed the EMS paramedics during the worst times of my family's life. I need to know that they are ready for me and my family and my neighbors. In 2015, my 55 year old brother suffered a, a, a life threatening incident. We should have driven him to strong and not waited for an ambulance. It was a nightmarish experience, he lived, by the way, he lived in Ontario, don't know who came, whatever, but that's what it was. In 2017, my husband was diagnosed within five minutes of visiting his primary care physician that he needed immediate hospital care. I drove him to RGH because I did not want to have the same experience that my brother had. A CT was performed and he is now in the history books based on the results of his CT. And that's all I remember the doctor saying, he has a pulmonary embolism, big like grapefruit. That's what I always will remember, big like grapefruit. You are our leaders and tasked with safeguarding our community and I very much appreciate the tasks that you have. We need basic life-saving services and NEQUALS is one of those services. I won't be able to bear losing a loved one due to a time, resource, or money constraint. These are the lives of our loved ones. 25 cents per thousand is worth a life saved. If this is not passed this year, what is our plan B? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ron Hins. Just like the ketchup. 
Heinz. <laughs> Darn it. Done that way for all my life. What can I say? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Ron Heinz. Uh, honored board. Um, I'm a motorcyclist. <clears throat> that means that one of these days, somebody's going to pull out in front of me. I try not to let that happen. I'm also a motorcycle safety rider course instructor, which means I have to teach people to not let someone pull out in front of them. Yes, it happened to me after a number of years, and I ended up laying in the middle of Route 250. Okay? Yes, the ambulance responded very, very quickly, and I suffered very few injuries. My wife is on the board. You already heard from her. We want to know that there is going to be ambulance services for the town of Webster. Uh, and as a current member of the Monroe County Traffic Safety Board, I interact with police and ambulance services to try to get everything we can get for our people all over the county. Um, I'd like to know, I heard Mr. Schreiber, this is the first time I've heard him. It's a good question. What is going to be the plan B, as Diana said as well? Let's take care of our people. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Thank you. Phyllis Lochner. And luckily, I know Phyllis because she didn't put an R at the end of her name. So if I didn't know her, I would have said Lochney. <laughs> It's That's locked. a good one. I like that. I'm going to remember that. Uh, thank you for having me today. And I will, this will be a quick one. I just want to um, reiterate Nequals and Wems uh, Ahmed. Everyone there is professional. They're easy to deal with. And I just hope that they're around for years. I've had, we've all had issues with our families on and off, and it's not until you see somebody come into your house when you have an emergency. And I tell you, this group is the one that I would like to see. Thank you. Thanks, Phyllis. Thanks, Phyllis. <clears throat> I think he might have left. Gene <clears throat> Kohlmeyer? I think Gene just signed in, but I don't think he is speaking on the podium tonight. Well, I can call him Salvatore Fantuz or I could say Soccer Sam. Which would you like? I guess I said both. Whatever. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Supervisor Flaherty and members of the Webster Town Board, my name is Salvatore Fantuzzo. Uh, I own several properties in town of Webster. I'd like to just go off script for a second uh, regarding some of the things that Mr. Schreiber said. Um, that was then, this is now. I, I think it's great to have volunteers, um, but I think it's, it's hard enough to get paid people today than get volunteers. I think the epidemics right now with the drug issues are different than it was a few years back, years back. I think the whole COVID depression and all the other things that are going on in our world are way different. And unfortunately, I had the a situation in Florida. My, my in-laws live in Florida, and they did have uh, a service there that was fire, ambulance, notary. <laughs> um, they, uh, they were like 35 minutes to get to my in-law's house. Um, my father-in-law did make it. Um, my mother-in-law forced me to bring something there to thank them. And it was like, like I was in Mayberry. Um, going to the facility on Jackson Road is, is probably the nicest, one of the nicest, if not the nicest facility in, in the country. And I am proud to, to live, to, to be a, uh, have properties in the town of Webster. Back to my script, all right? My family moved to this area in 1999 where life is worth living. My three kids graduated from Schrader or Schroeder. I don't know which, whatever one it is. I'm here tonight to speak in support of establishing an EMS tax district, ensuring our town maintains this important community-based EMS service. 
I've heard some of the other people speak tonight. I also knew nothing about what was going on other than there was a meeting tonight. I don't know what, what's, what, what the plan is here. But I was recently shocked to find out that our town tax dollars doesn't properly support this service, in my opinion. I've been told our town supports the service with about $50,000 a year. If that's true, that's forty-one sixty-seven a day, a month, I'm sorry, $139 a day, and five seventy-nine per hour. Think about that, $5.79 per hour to maintain the, one of the nicest state-of-the-art facilities in, in our country. Several years ago, and I won't get emotional here because I've been trying not to, reading this, <clears throat> I experienced a life-threatening medical emergency. The, the paramedics at NEQ responded in minutes and saved my life. I was told by many doctors that a few more minutes and I wouldn't be here or I wouldn't be the same. <clears throat> Man, I can't believe I did that. A few months ago, my wife and I were both very ill due to COVID and again, NEQ was there in minutes to treat us and transport us to the hospital. Again, I was told by emergency doctors that I was lucky they saved us. On February 3rd, my beautiful daughter, Roxana, a Webster resident, went into labor in the middle of a snowstorm. I thought I had great tires on my 4x4. Wasn't so great. NEQ and the Webster EMS transported her to the hospital where she delivered our 10th grandchild, Carmine. I think having a high quality local EMS service is vital to this community, so vital. July 5th, my wife Linda and I made a significant donation to NEQ to ensure that our community and county know about how good EMS, what, the good that EMS does for our community. It's not clear to me why there's a debate about this. I think 100% funding, in my opinion, should go to NEQ and Webster EMS. In my opinion, from experience, police, fire, and EMS services should be the top items that our tax dollars are used for. I'm here to ask you as a Webster property owner, businessman, husband, father, grandfather, and grandfather, that you move with full speed to adjust your budget immediately to 100% funding of EMS in this great community. Anyone that has experienced a life-threatening situation or worse understands the need of this amazing community asset. We are so lucky to have the dedicated EMTs and paramedics we have in Webster. Thank you, that those of you that are here tonight. And thank you, Town Supervisor Flaherty and the town board members for giving me this opportunity to speak tonight. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Oh, you moved seats, didn't you, Russ? Were you sitting up? <laughs> Russ Siskin. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Russ Siskin, and I live in the town of Webster on Gallant Fox Lane with my wife and four ch adult children. I also run a business in Webster, which has employees that also live in Webster with their families. As a citizen of the town of Webster, I'm here to clearly state my strong support for a local, community-based ambulance by asking the town board to support NEQ and Webster EMS in their request to establish a medical services tax district in the town of Webster. I can tell you that I understand this issue as an expert on this topic and hope to provide some valuable insight into the urgent need for you as the town board to support this initiative. I have 40 years long history in EMS, both as a paramedic and an EMS executive, with nearly 30 of those years running a very similar ambulance service called Nova in Onondaga County in the town of Clay, which is a similar town to the town of Webster in size, demographics, and strong sense of community. I founded NOVA in 1994 and served as its president and CEO throughout nearly that 30-year history. This experience includes not only founding and forming that service, but growing and overcoming many similar challenges over the years. I was able to lend this experience to lay the groundwork for Webster EMS to get its operating authority back in the summer of 2018. And so not only do I have the experience in the EMS sector, sector, but I know the specific details of the Webster EMS service from a data-driven perspective right, that's non-emotional. I helped analyze the need for Webster EMS and the impact or, of having or not having it would have on our community. 
it was proven that Webster EMS was needed in 2018. This proof came from data, not opinion, resulting in Webster EMS being granted a CON, or actually an operating authority, based clearly on this evidence. The proof showed how not only does the town of Webster benefit from the existence of Webster EMS, but the whole EMS system benefits from its existence. You've heard people talk about ambulance response times. Ambulance response times are in a very fragile state right now, nationwide. The data showed that if we don't have a local EMS service, a res response times will measurably suffer, which can literally impact the life of Webster citizens. This is not an issue caused by poor management, but one by caused by lack of appreciation and specifically support for EMS at a local, state, and national level. Medicaid and Medicare reimbursement is way below the cost of actually providing ambulance services. Who, who's subsidizing that? Private insurance companies, they barely reimburse enough to cover the cost of an emergency call, and their significant number of people, when they receive those checks from their insurance company, keep them. Third-party billing models, I'm very familiar with those. They do not address the cost of readiness for the ambulance, which is the cost of having resources available while they're not generating income from transporting a patient. The bottom line, the cost to deliver EMS services is rising exponentially while reimbursement rates are struggling to keep up. New York State, believe it or not, does not classify EMS as an essential emergency service like it does with fire and police. New York State makes sure those two services exist they don't do the same for EMS. As the board of the town of Webster, for pennies on the dollar, are you willing to risk the lives of Webster citizens and publicly declare EMS is a nice to have service, but not really necessary in our town? As others have said to you as well, let me ask each of you, what is the backup plan to protect me, my family, my employees, and their families that live and work in Webster? NEQ and Webster EMS are, are too big and service too big of, of a need to have any other agency just step in to cover for them if they're gone. I know this agency has done much, if not more, for their community than most, and having them here makes our community better and safer. In closing, let me say thank you for allowing me to speak today, and I beg you to please support this initiative. It may be a matter of life and death of someone right in this room. Thank you. Thank you very much. Russ, thanks. <clears throat> um, can, I, can I ask you a question? And I know Russ, by the way. Um, Clay near Syracuse that you said is a similar community to Webster? Correct. And you, you at Nova, your firm has the number one. We of have the, the operating authority for the town of Clay. How long have you guys had an ambulance district there? Uh, well, we, we've had the operating authority. Um, it's just transferred and transferred, but it's since 1973. I mean, it's been a long time. How long have you had an ambulance district there? Oh, the, the, the a tax district? Yes. Well, like, like, like this area, we are only one of two that don't in that county. Do but, you want an ambulance district? Um, well, certainly we would benefit from it, but one of the things that you have to understand is we've been around for 30 years. We've uh -huh. been able to, you know, that allows us to parlay a different financial perspective than, okay. than a, somebody who's been around for 5, 10, 20 years. 30 years is a long time. Gotcha. And, okay. and I'm a cheap guy. And, Hoard money. So. so am I right? You, you've never gone to Clay and yes. made a pitch for a um, ambulance district? They will, give us, they will give us funding on various projects and such. Have you gone to Clay and asked them for an ambulance district? No, we have not okay. asked for an ambulance district. Thanks, Russ. Uh, Joe Herps, you speaking or are you just watching? Good evening. A little different for me. What's your name, sir? So my name is Joe Herbst. Nice um, to see you, Joe. So, <laughs> um, I may not have all the numbers like everybody else does, um, but I just wish to uh, voice my opinion based on being a resident of this town for 60 years and serving this town for more than half my life. <clears throat> I am one of nine children born and raised here. My family moved into Webster in 1837 when it was still North Penfield. Um, I've witnessed and experienced firsthand the growth and necessity for more cost-effective services, as you are well aware. To me, having one medical provider service under the umbrella of a district and a solid financial foundation only makes for good sense, no different than that of police department or fire department. 
Wondering if you're going to make payroll or have to park an ambulance due to lack of funds is not an acceptable situation. All first responders need to know they have the means to provide the most cost-effective service within their capabilities. I don't believe there is a person in this room uh, or listening that wouldn't want emergency services to respond to any situation that would re require immediate medical attention with the utmost of speed. Whether it's a motor vehicle accident, heart attack, stroke, etc., time and response are crucial, more so if it involves you, your spouse, your child, husband, wife, father, mother, etc. We take for granted every day these services are there, ready, willing, and able to respond, but unless you have actually experienced it, it's only an assumption. Let's remove this assumption but by providing them with a sound, stable um, foundation via a district. I recognize this is yet another financial responsibility that falls on us as taxpayers, but I strongly believe that this is one we cannot live without, literally. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Dan D D Daniel DeSalvo. And Zoom meeting. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. yes. I knew I recognized Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Daniel DeSalvo. I'm the assistant chief of Gates Ambulance in the town of Gates. I do not live or work in the town of Webster. I'm here to show my support for NEQ EMS and to, um, I have spoken to the supervisor and Councilman Cahill on Zoom. You've picked my brain on this topic a couple times. Um, we do have a tax district in the town of Gates. We've had one for 26 years. Um, and most recently, uh, we just established a tax district um, at the town of Ogden, the village of Spenceport, and portion of the town of Parma that we also cover as well. Uh, we would not be an EMS organization if we have not had that provided to us. Um, the board here has a tough decision to make. Um, local EMS to provide for the residents in the town is, is the way to go. Um, we, we've had it, it's proven for us to work. Um, let them have a public res resolution. Let, let the townspeople speak. Let, let them make the decision. Let, let them show the sh <coughs> their support and, 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 and see what they say. I, I think you'd be surprised. Um, we went through this countless times. Um, I know this process quite well. Um, I don't call myself an expert, but we, we went through this. We went through this last year. Very successful. We had a very supporting uh, town boards and village boards. Um, they may hate me to say this, but I, I would offer to reach out to the Ogden Town Supervisor, the Village Spenceport Mayor, the Town of Gates Town Supervisor, and the Town of Parma Supervisor, and get some insight. See what they say. See, see what they say and what their feedback is on the ambulance service and, and what we provide and what, what we do for them in the community. So the, the only other thing is I, um, I don't do a lot with social media. Um, I, was, I started catching up and reading all the commentary that was going on with this, a lot of passion. Um, a lot of people seem to be hung up on the fact of having tax monies and third-party billing. As the other gentleman said, the third party billing, it's not the answer, it's never been the answer, which is why we're here tonight and why we've had established districts. But there's other alternatives. What if you went and created a tax district and instead of 25, 30 cents per thousand, you did a dollar 30 and you did away with the billing? So it'd be a model like the fire districts have, like you fund the police department. And do away with the billing then if that's the biggest hang up. All I'm saying is there's other alternatives, other answers, other things to look at. I'd be happy to speak with you guys again like I did in the past virtually, now hopefully in person. Sure. But I'm just here to show my support and, um, and be a resource if we can. When we went through this process, Ahmed and his staff were at every one of our public hearing meetings, town board meetings. They didn't come up and speak. They didn't have to. Their presence alone, being in the back of the room to show the support was enough. It spoke volumes. Uh, the people recognize that they were there to support, and that's why I'm here tonight as well. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Quick Thanks. question yeah. for you. Yes. How many of those townships put it up for, as a, for a referendum for a vote? Um, all of them. They all did? Yes. Well, we did it under one collectively. The town of Gates was separate because we've had that established for 26 years now. Um, <clears> but <throat> we did this. It had to go before each town and village. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Daniel, but... So your coverage area is those four towns and villages you just? Correct. Uh, okay. 
how many calls between those four towns and mutual aid do you We're do gonna be year? over 9,000 calls this year. So is that like 5,000 patients where you send an ambulance and then on 70% of them you send a fly car? We, our, our model is um, ALS ambulances 95% of the time. We do have some fly cars, but that's not our primary thing. Our primary focus is staffing the ambulances, getting the ambulances on the road. So how many patients, people, make up those 9,000 calls? 9,000? Uh, um, no. Not transports. Um, when you, when you, you, a, a call doesn't equal transport, right? Correct. A call, 9,000 calls, is that 9,000 people you're going to? Or is it about 8,000 people you're going to? And Probably about 7,800, 8,000. Some calls we get canceled on. Some calls are unfounded. There's never is a patient. Um, okay. Some calls are mutual aid where we're going to help out other places. Um, so it's, I, I didn't bring my numbers with me tonight. Okay. But um, that's, that's it. Um, and then if you're just doing third-party billing with that, every time you go out there, it's costing fuel, insurance, payroll, everything. And that there's no patient or there's no transport, you can't recover or and, potentially and, recover. And or, you know what? I'll let you off the hook because, Daniel, yeah. you were great when on the Zoom meeting, and I hope we do get a chance to sit down face-to-face -face and have more discussion Absolutely. on this. Um, how many Medicare and Medicaid are, do you think, of those 9,000 Where and, um, and the town of Gates alone, where it, it's huge. It's huge. We're probably 45, 50%. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, yeah. Daniel. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Gary Copey. Uh, thank you for having this meeting tonight and inviting the public. I think it's a it's a great thing to hear. Um, the wide voice of the town, the people that live here, obviously some people that don't live here, and um, it's great to, to have uh, accumulation of data that you're, you have to deal with because it's not an easy task that the board has in front of them. Um, I will share with you too that I attended the workshop last week, which I was very impressed, and I think it was pretty resounding to hear that all of you, and I think there was a consensus there that you see a real need for this. And there, there really is no alternative, if you think about it, um, in terms of providing this service uh, to the town of Webster. And the other thing is, and, and Supervisor, I think you might have brought it up at the meeting, if my recollection was correct, is that possibly this could wait. Um, and, I, and I would uh, respectfully disagree with that because I think there's a real urgent need for something of this nature here in, in the town of Webster. And I think the citizens of Webster obviously deserve it as well. Um, so I'll tell you a quick story um, because I, I kind of look at it as, and, and as many of you have got up here and talked about it, those that have used the service and then potentially some people that may not have used the service, which um, kind of puts you a little bit at a disadvantage. And almost three years in a month to the day, um, I had, I, I guess I have to say the good fortune of having to use the service because um, after going out to dinner with my wonderful wife, um, I came back and was profusely sweating. And um, I, you know, try to take care of myself. I mean, I work out, I do all the exercising <clears throat> and everything that goes along with that. And um, there really was no reason for potentially what was going on with me. Um, you know, she has been in the nursing business for over 40 some years, and uh, she thought that something was drastically wrong, and she knows my stubbornness. Um, I probably would not go to the hospital. And um, uh, she quietly went into the bathroom and called 911, and as someone had uh, pointed out earlier, um, it really is a matter between life and death in terms of how quickly and how efficiently that these folks provide for service. Um, anyways, um, 
probably two minutes after she got back uh, from uh, doing something in the bathroom, um, maybe another four or five minutes went by, hear a knock on the door. And sure enough, it was the paramedics that showed up at our front door. And I was a little bit upset because I thought, well, possibly I was just having heartburn, just give me a Zantac or whatever you guys would give a, a patient that would be in that situation. But in fact, the person that came in said that there's something drastically wrong here. And um, after doing all of the necessary things with me, worked me up real quickly and, and asked me politely to get on a gurney, which I did, and took me into um, uh, uh, the hospital emergency room. And uh, I was met there by a team of uh, people that worked me up and um, if you know anything about how the heart works, um, uh, I am happy to say that I'm here as a survivor because my widowmaker, if you're familiar with that main artery, which I'm sure the paramedics know all about that, um, wasn't 50% blocked, it wasn't 70% blocked, but it was 100% blocked. So I truly was a ticking time bomb, okay? Um, so two stents later, three years and a, uh, a month later, I'm standing up here telling my story. Um, and, uh, you know, very grateful. Uh, and, and I give a lot of, of the uh, gratitude. I give a lot of the, um, the reason I'm here is because these people that go out and do this as a service, right? They come into your home, they provide it, it's a high level thing that they needed to immediately assess and literally saved my life. So, you know, again, prior to that, I probably would not have realized the important function that this brings to any community, whether you're here in Webster, Penfield, or any other surrounding um, town or, or, or um, village. But it, it really, truly is something I think is necessary, a good way to spend the money. And um, um, I, I guess if, if we don't, the question becomes, is what is the alternative? And that's the thought that I would love to leave with the board today as you're going through this very uh, difficult and uh, not an easy solution to come up with. But, um, Thank you mm -hmm. for your time and uh, appreciate that, um, that you give that some thought in terms of what the alternative would be. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Michael Pope. So I'm Michael Pope. I um, am the vice president of the board of directors for NEQ, but I want to step away from being the, on the board of directors of NEQ and talk from a perspective of a healthcare provider and a concerned citizen. I'm a healthcare provider. I've worked 20 years. Actually, it'd be 20 years tomorrow um, in critical care and emergency medicine um, as a provider, and I see patients every day. Patients that come in that you've heard all of the, uh, the stories and people talking about, you know, time. And time is of the essence. And time of uh, getting EMS to you, uh, getting these people to the hospital. You know, you just heard about the Widowmaker, right? A Widowmaker being occluded, the patient having a heart attack. It's only a matter of minutes before that becomes a cardiac arrest and maybe these people aren't here talking to us, right? A patient with stroke, time is brain. In a patient with stroke, it's normally a blood clot. It can be a bleed, but a blood clot, and a blood clot to the brain, as long as that blood clot is there, that brain is dying, and that patient is gonna be debilitated and probably in a nursing home. And if you've seen the state of nursing homes, or the state of hospitals even right now, right, healthcare, is a disaster. And nursing homes are a total disaster. And you want your loved one to end up in a nursing home debilitated because we didn't have EMS to respond, right? If you believe, and our former supervisor tells you that there's volunteers out there that'll come, 
There is no volunteers out there. Response times are 30 minutes to an hour or more. And you look at the city, and if you think that you're going to get response to the town of Webster that's going to save lives and get these patients to the hospital so they can get the cardiac cath and get that widow maker opened up, or they can get a medication to break up the clot to save that brain, to put them back into the community, you're wrong, right? These, pay, these ambulance services, AMR, Monroe, their response times are 30 minutes to an hour and sometimes longer in the city. My son works as a, a tech in the uh, Highland Hospital. Had a patient walk in the other day with stab wounds. Now he didn't come in with stab wounds because he didn't want to know anybody to know what happened. His response was when he was asked, why did you come in with stab wounds? And he said, I called an ambulance and I waited an hour and an ambulance did not respond. If you take an hour to respond in the city, how long do you think it's going to take to respond here? We've got to keep EMS here, right? We've got to keep it going. EMS agencies are closing every day because they can't survive, right? Charlie Schreiber stood up here and told you they shut down EMS because they saw a better model. I will say that's probably not exactly true, right? What they saw was they're bleeding money like every agency and they close their doors just like everybody else is. Uh, ambulance services are closing every day because they don't have the support, because the funding is not enough. And we just need to keep the EMS alive, right? You gotta keep, Ahmed spoke last week and he talked about the reduction in the number of paramedics and EMTs just in Monroe County alone, right? Because we can't keep them. These people deserve better and they deserve more, right? You can't do it, right? You've got to keep, keep that going. So I'm just asking for the support, right? And I want to just point out something that, you know, you ask for more time to do the research. I think the research has been done. When you look at, the, look at Monroe County, right? And I'm just going to read off some numbers um, that were taken off of uh, public information. Brighton Ambulance District, $428,000 a year. Chile Ambulance, 120000 Gates, 920,000. Henrietta, 840,000. Ogden, 632,000. Parma, 96. Parrington Ambulance, 233,000 for Parrington. And Pittsford Ambulance, $300,000. Those are task districts in Monroe County, right? I think the research has been done, right? It's there. This is what happened, and this is, this is what has to take place. We need to keep EMS alive. And we need to keep EMS in our community. We can't depend on response from another town, right? We can't even depend on response from Penfield or Rondequoit. They have their own areas to cover. And they're going to cover their area first, just like Webster is going to take care of their town first. So we need to look at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Mike, your, your, Mike, your quote from... Uh, the amount of money that Brighton gets, their tax district. Does that include the monies that Brighton pays for their own ambulances, or is that separate? I don't know that you answered that. I took it off of the stuff that's available. I know they do, they do have a tax district yes. in Brighton, and they do give them money. Correct. But in addition, it's my understanding that in addition to that, um, the town of Brighton also pays for, separately pays for their ambulances. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see Michael again. Four weeks ago, we walked out together, shaking hands. You were thanking the town board for the $205,000 grant that we gave to Nequals. Right about the same time you gave a donation, Soccer Sam. Must have been a good week for Nequals at that time. Um, next, Michael Mounts. Hi, I'm Michael Mounts. I moved to Webster in 2011 after I retired from the Air Force. Did uh, 34 years serving our country. And I have a perspective of not many people have in this room that I was the uh, commander of three military installations that were like towns, except they had an airport attached to it. 
So I have a different uh, feeling about how you approach your job because you don't have the same kind of responsibilities, but they're similar, quite similar. And I think you're doing a great job, by the way. I'm not trying to kiss up to you. <laughs> Actually, I, I did. We had a long conversation before you became a Oh, I chief. remember. Yeah, I remember it, too. Anyway, um, the only difference between my, running a military base with an airport attached to it is sometimes you're surrounded by people who want to literally kill you. Now, it's kind of like being a politician, right? Because they want to kill politicians. I'd rather have my job than your job. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, the two main responsibilities that I see here is providing for the safety and security of the people of the town of Webster, which is like what a base commander does, right? Along with a lot of other little projects. But I have the, also been the recipient of this wonderful service that this town has. Two years ago, I did a silly thing, fell, and seriously injured myself. I was taken, picked up by the ambulance folks. They took care of me. Last summer, that person right there, coincidentally, uh, helped my wife when she fell down the stairs and seriously injured herself. And then this past April, my eldest child had a Widowmaker, and he's still here. So this is a vital, vital, vital service. And I cannot imagine anybody really protesting a tiny little tax assessment so that we have that safety and security, which is your big job. That's all I got to say. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Dolly, it's time to flip over the page. <laughs> Uh, Sally Fidelli. Okay, thank you. I'm Sally Fidelli. Um, thanks for listening to me. So this um, truly comes, I think, looking at it um, from being proactive rather than reactive. So looking ahead at making this service taxable and really um, supporting our town. I mean, Nequil Wems has been very close and near and dear to my heart um, and my daughter. So um, my youngest daughter, where she has required that service um, two separate occasions, and she's seven and a half. She does um, have a cerebral palsy, and uh, she first time had a buccal fracture, and the second time had some severe abdominal pain. And I can tell you the response time was very, very quick. Um, as a parent, you're very appreciative of that response time. And I, um, you know, I can't say enough about the paramedics, the EMTs that come, they, they are providing the utmost care and respect to no matter what call they're showing up on. Um, they definitely deserve the, the highest level of pay. And when we talk about like our fire and our police department, EMS, um, they need to be right at the top of that list too. And I think from all the stories that you have heard tonight, you can see that this is a valuable service and we need to keep them here and um, because they are worth it. I think we, you know, sometimes look at those tax dollars and until we have a personal story, we may not appreciate where those tax dollars are going. We have all these other expenses that we look at, but this is a valuable service and um, and I think these stories really truly tell you what they mean to our town. Thank you. Thank, Thank you Sarah. very much. The Honorable Ron Nesbitt. Thank you, board, for having me this evening. I appreciate it. When I spoke uh, two weeks ago, Supervisor Flaherty stated that Mr. Uh, Ken and I were putting the cart before the horse in regards to a new ambulance district. 
based on a presentation that was given last week, I think these topics need to be addressed before this process goes any farther. <coughs> Excuse me. I have three concerns to address briefly tonight, which center on the financial implications of an ambulance district. My first concern is that Webster residents will not get their ambulance ride covered in full under this plan. A significant factor if you are a senior. Under this plan, residents will pay a tax rate that only gets them $150 off of their ambulance ride. So they still have to pay an additional $1,200 to $1,500 for that ambulance bill. Currently, the Webster Town Board has a contract with NEQUALS that has no teeth in it whatsoever. If you pass this ambulance district tax, there's nothing in the contract that states he cannot raise the ambulance rates next year to $2,000. You have no contract with the teeth in it, and you need to do something about that. Also, about two months ago, I filed a FOIL request requesting the financials of NEQUALS for the years 2020 and 2021. The response I got from the town clerk was, we have no financial statements. So how is the town board going to make a decision when you have no financial statements from NEQUALS in the years 2020 in 2021. The Webster and West Webster Fire Departments both receive tax monies, but they don't send residents an additional bill if they put out a fire at your house. This is called double dipping, and Nicole shouldn't be allowed to do it. My second concern is the lack of financial details to back their claim of financial hardship. In fact, Nichols has shown a profit on his tax returns since 2020 and before. Webster residents certainly deserve all the financial facts before any decisions are made going forward. And we all saw last week was rhetoric without updated financial statements. Now, for the last two Thursdays, I've been watching town board budget meetings. And I know a few things about those budgets. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now that Mr. Adams will probably agree with me that they're probably a million or a million and a half over budget right now. Because nobody in this room tonight is talking about one significant impact. And that's called the tax cap. Any approval of an ambulance district is subject to New York State tax cap as a special taxing district. This means if the town of Webster applies the over $800,000 to an ambulance district, the town board will ha have to cut the same appropriate amount from the town budget or break the tax cap. Okay? You just can't do an ambulance district and keep the budget the same or break the tax cap. This means potentially cutting critical services to Webster residents in other areas. Highway, police, library, sewer, recreation to achieve the desired cuts to the budget. Would you cut leap pickup or not fill the police officer vacancies you have right now? Or, <clears throat> or not fix the pump station that needs to be repaired? I don't see how that is feasible given the current budget and the important re services residents depend on. In closing, I will leave you with two final thoughts. First, to Supervisor Flaherty, don't put the cart before the horse here by taking a vote on an ambulance district until you get all the financial statements from NEQUALS and make them available to the public. 
along with writing a new contract with teeth in it. Understanding what the tax cap implications are to all 46,000 residents and exploring other options that you have. <coughs> Excuse me. Second, I would like to state that I'm a 65 year resident of Webster and I truly care about the truth and accurate reporting to Webster citizens. I am not a keyboard warrior. I'm simply someone who has been in your seat and knows the importance of having the complete truth and facts about town issues before making critical decisions on the future for our residents. There certainly needs to be an open forum and a public hearing on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope <laughs> cursive writing. It's a lost trade, isn't it? Is it Paula Vieira? Hey, then I could read the cursive. Uh, no, but we. Uh, Paula, yep. what is your address? Twelve Twelve Silverstone Pass. Twelve Twelve Silverstone Silver Pass. Silverstone Pass. All right. I guess I'm, I think I'm pretty well last, and I really don't have much to add. And everybody that is in support of the whole um, function of NICU and everything that we're trying to do to keep them in Webster, I too have used them for our family. We own businesses in Webster. We've had to call for their services when, unfortunately, a few people have hit our buildings and got injured, accidents right outside our properties. Um, and the response time is five minutes, six minutes. To just on a personal note, because I really, like I said, I going last, I agree with everything that was said here in their support. Um, on a personal note, as far as Ahmed, I've known Ahmed for the better part of 18 years. He cares deeply about our community. He cares deeply about the residents. I've seen him leave family functions, social events, because his pager is going off and his priority at that moment becomes, let me go and help whoever needs my help. So I just thought it was important that I put that out there. Um, and I thank Ahmed for everything you do for our community as well as your whole team. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. Thank you. And just in case somebody didn't sign in, is there anybody else that wants it? We wouldn't short you. We wouldn't short you. Opportunity. Um, I also had an opportunity we, to we, work we, with Nicole on a very. We're, we're going to need your. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. We're going to need your name okay. and address. My name is Joe Capagreco Jr. and uh, I'm at 1232 Clear Pond Lane. In 2016, September 16th, at around two o'clock in the afternoon, I knew I was in trouble, and um, I looked for some neighbors to see if they could help me because I felt like I was having a medical emergency, and I was. Nobody was there, I called 911, and I said, if I'm gonna leave my insurance card on the floor and uh, unlock the door because I'm not, I might not be there uh, with you when, you when you come in, and sure enough, that happened to be the case. Um, Nequels came in afterwards, and this is always after the fact. Um, and uh, here's a big difference, I think, in some of the uh, discourse we've heard tonight in terms of uh, volunteers and expertise and so forth. Um, I was, went into cardiac arrest on the Bay Bridge, and if it wasn't for the good work of um, our paramedics, and I believe it was Julie, literally stopped on the Bay Bridge and paddled me back, back to life, to give me a chance to be able to get into the operating room. And long story short, quadruple bypass surgery, and a week later, after a coma, I came out and uh, was very thankful to be able to start my life again with my family we've always been here in Webster. Um, and lastly, if it wasn't for that expertise, oh, I, I have a funny, funny close. We were talking about financial considerations. I totally respect the budgets and, and uh, everybody's point of view. Um, after I came back to life, I called to find out um, who I can pay my bill to because they had saved my life. I wasn't worried about any, I would have paid $12,000 for that ambulance ride. Um, I called Nequals and said, I want to pay my bill. 
you guys saved my life. And it was Ahmed, my first encounter. He said, we don't get many people calling to pay their bill. <laughs> <laughs> no. He said, not only do I want to pay my bill, I want to talk to the volunteers. I want to be able to thank them personally for, for bringing, bringing me back. I had an opportunity to meet Julie and the EMS crew, the paramedics, my wife and I, to give them thanks and to really show our appreciation. And so I will be a lifelong supporter of Nequals as I've been a lifelong resident of Webster. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you much. Sir. Anybody else? I can't see behind. Oh, well, come on. I'm gonna go. Uh, what, what? Am I going to say no? I have a crooked one around the edge. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're the one that said you're the crooked one, not me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. I, I, won't, uh, I won't take a lot of time tonight. I know it's been a very long evening. First of all, I want to say thank you. This is very humbling, actually. I sent out a note at the last meeting. The supervisor and Councilman Cahill and some others said they wanted to hear from the community. I asked some of my friends to come and speak tonight. And um, it, it takes your breath away and it humbles you when you ask for help to support a cause that is, you're passionate about, and this is what you get. This room is filled with people to support the cause that I've spent 20 years of my life in this town supporting. <clears throat> I want to be very, very clear. We're not going away tomorrow, right? We're, we're not in dire straits. We are under stress. And the time to ask for help is when you're in stress, not when you're underwater. So because of the relationship we've had with the former town supervisor, the current town supervisor and town board, we raised our hand early and said, things are getting tight. You were very kind and very generous and very helpful with the ARPA money. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to give us the lion's share, and it will be lifeblood to get us through the end of the year. We are having challenges that no one could have predicted three years ago, let alone today. We got payment today, two checks for $35, 10 and 25 from 2017. I'm not sure how much that's going to help our financial situation, but that is how long some of these payments are taking. I had a woman come in today in her 70s, and she explained to me, and we talked about the billing, and she showed me her Medicare bill. She goes, Ahmed, you're not old enough to get one of these, but I want you to see what the bill says. It was from Excellus Blue Cross, and we read the bill, and there was a charge. We had come and given a service. She did not transport. We, we took time. We assessed. We evaluated. It was the best decision at the time in the midst of a COVID crisis to leave her at home. Several hundred dollar bill. On the bill, it clearly states, this bill is not your responsibility. You do not have to pay it. Now, this individual, out of the goodness of their heart, came and said, Ahmed, I'm not going to let that happen. We're going to pay you something. So we got on the phone with the insurance company today. We called them in the room today, and the insurance company said, well, because it wasn't a transport, we're not paying it. That is what the bill says right on it. How do we run an organization where we cannot predict our income, where the insurance companies are fighting against us, where Medicare and Medicaid is not helping, where every cost is going up steadily? Former Supervisor Nesbitt is exactly right. Times have changed, right? The model today is different than what we were at five or six years ago. Agencies are closing, as Russ said, we had a lengthy conversation, right? We aren't the only one. We are not a mismanaged organization. We run our business as lean as we possibly can. We manage our expenses, we manage our costs, we manage our labor. We have choices, right? If in the end there isn't finances, we have to run as a business. Supervisor Flaherty, this is what you and I do for a living. What is the cost of that? It means we reduce our coverage, we reduce our staffing, less ambulances, longer wait times. As long as there is a penny in the bank at NEQ, I will not let that happen. I will make sure we are as a viable and we provide the level of service we have for the last 20 years for the next 20 years. And all we ask, Supervisor Flaherty and the town board, if an EMS district is not right because of the timing and level of understanding, please give us some other life blood until the time is right. Thank you for your time tonight. And more importantly, thank you to every single one of you for being here tonight. It means more than I'll ever be able to tell you. Thanks. Thank you, Ahmed. Yeah. I thank everybody for coming today. And, um, we heard some, some pretty wonderful stories today. Um, you heard pro ambulance district from numerous people. Heard from the past town supervisor who's encouraging us to um, do additional research. I respect his, uh, his position. I agree with his position. And um, 
we're not going to let our local ambulance go under. It's not going to happen. We will, we're not saying we're going to not do an ambulance district. We're going to continue to support our local ambulance and how we get there will be a robust discussion. I had a probably an hour long discussion with the supervisor in his office. He cornered um, me. Um, yesterday. <laughs> um, we look at, we look at the situation. We both agree on, you know, what we need to do. It's how we're going to get there is, yeah. is, is, is the debate. And, um, but the robust discussion, and the one thing that we both agree on is we will not let WEMS go away. That's not going to happen. And how we get there will be more lengthy discussions, and it will be inclusive of, of WEMS board and AMED, and we'll do research with Gates, with Dan, and, and other municipalities to see what they've done so that, you know, we're not starting from ground zero. You know, let's look at other municipalities that have done this, see what works, see what doesn't work. We can talk about a referendum because I'm very strong proponent of A, hearing from the people, right, the residents, what their feeling is, and, and also giving them an opportunity to have a voice as we've done here tonight. And I think I would love to see this continue. The more people that we can get in, whether you're pro ambulance district, or you're against an ambulance district, or any concerns that you have. You know, this is one forum that we have every board meeting, well, with the exception of the workshops, this is the forum, you know, that we, we afford our residents. And I think it's wonderful. And at some point, we may have meet at, at Thomas in the gym and have a, a public um, forum like we did with the, uh, the sandbar and other, mm -hmm. and other topics. It's very possible. But there's not anybody on this board that's not in favor and does not support um, WEMS. I just want well, you to know that. And, and, to <laughs> um, and I don't want to drag this on all night, and I really appreciate everybody coming and everything they said, um, is that, you know, talk is cheap, actions speak louder than words. There's a lot of stuff flying around in 2021, and Commissioner Schreiber somewhat articulated it a little bit as the first speaker. It culminated in November when the town board, and you can call it what you want, but it is, we trumped West Webster, West Webster Fire District awarding Penfield Volunteer Ambulance half of Webster. Now, most of you speakers tonight or attendees are in Nequals and WEMS. So unless you just got hired in the last 10 months, you do know that, right? That's an action. That's not words. So if you go home and say, I don't know if that Flaherty and that board support a local ambulance, what do you call that action? Because that action didn't come out with, uh, without some pain, if you want to call it, for us from a standpoint of perception and all that from West Webster Fire. There was a cost to that, and I think you saw that a little bit tonight. But it was the right thing to do, because we all feel as though we want a hometown ambulance. It's something that past Supervisor Nesbitt started years ago, and right. it continued on, and Charlie and Ahmed went to Albany and got it all done about two weeks into me being supervisor. You came back here and said the town got a CON, Certificate of Need. But I got to be honest with everybody here. Now, I'm an impatient guy because I'm in business, so government moves slow, way slower than I like to move. November 16th, we give all 35 miles to, to Nequals and Wems, and at least maybe I'm losing my memory and stuff, but it was kind of giving me the impression that based on that award, that that would solve a lot of problems of Nequals and WEMS, the way their call and billing and all that went. We said that we would get an amended contract because Supervisor Nesbitt is right. We don't have a contract with teeth. We said we need to amend it. It's got to be changed now that the whole town has it. Now it's serious. That thing is dragged along. 
and it's not done yet. Well, I guess if we're going for an ambulance district, we don't need to get it done because we can tear it up because we're going to have to have a new contract if we go ambulance district. We award $205,000 on July 7th, and I'm just being honest with everybody. It seems like the minute that the, the, the ink wasn't dry in the check, and all of a sudden I, I'm, I'm in with this presentation that this is DEFCON 5. This gentleman back here, the supervisor, is right. You foil the town. You didn't have 20 and 21 financials. I had 19 financials. Because to be honest with everybody, I got 19 financials back when we were discerning whether to trump Wes Webster fire. By the way, I got Penfield volunteers, too. I was doing my homework. I wanted to see, should we pursue trumping them? Foil us again, Ron, because now I have the 20 and 21. So here's the thing. A lot of emotional stories today. Mr. Copey, I totally understand what you're talking about because you know what? On my birthday in 2018, in front of my 11-year-old son, I dropped at 7 a.m. Wems and knee qualls took me to the hospital. Pulmonary embolism. I don't know if it was as big as the grapefruit. But it was my second blood clot. And so now I'm a lifer on blood thinners. So I totally appreciate what those people in the trenches do. But I got to tell you something. I've been around for a long time. You make emotional knee-jerk decisions, they're bad decisions. They're ones you're going to regret. And so a lot of things that Supervisor Nesbitt said, and he's been very critical of me, and where's Michael Mounts? You said, oh, I don't want to kiss your butt, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't take praise well. I always figure, what do you want? I like criticism because I learn from criticism. Give it to you if I had it. There you go. <laughs> he makes a lot of good points. Now, I said to John, and I'll say to Ahmed, I'm not, there's no way that this town board is going to let our local ambulance go down. But you can't show up a week after you got $205,000 and all of a sudden say, we're going bankrupt. When I'm like, what, what the, where did that come from? Now, I got to tell you something. I'm going to do the research. I'll work with them and I'll work with Nequals and we'll figure out how to make sure that the ship stays afloat until we come up with the best decision for this town today in 20 years. Not a knee-jerk decision because somebody came and pulled at heartstrings. That'll be a bad decision because if we rush to it and all of a sudden we don't have the right contract, Soccer Sam, smart businessman, he doesn't write stupid contracts, I bet. I want to write a, a good contract for the citizens of Webster. I don't know if a tax district with $800,000 with 150 bucks going toward your ride is a good deal. Is it a good deal for the Medicare person? Is it a good deal for the Medicaid person? Is it a good deal for the private insurance? Is it a good deal for the health savings account that has the deductible of $6,000? Is it a good deal for the transport or the non-transport? Do all of you know the answer to that? Because I don't yet. So I don't feel comfortable making a decision on that without those facts. I'm, navig I'm looking at the financials that we have. Now we have it through December 31st, 2021. Ron, I expect the FOIL request on my desk tomorrow. Now somewhere between then and seven months, I'm going to need to talk to Ahmed and Nequals. I'm going to need to dissect the last seven months to figure out from 19, 20, 21 up to July, why are we suddenly at DEFCON 5? Because I don't understand it. And I'm an accountant by trade. So I need to understand that. Now that might not be popular, what I'm saying to everybody that just talked here tonight, okay? But I'm gonna go back to what I've said to Ahmed and John, and we've had some robust conversations, haven't we, John and Ahmed? Oh, yeah. And you guys don't like what I say or the tone of how I say it. And I said, forget what people say. Watch what they do. What did I do on November 16th last year, a mere nine months ago? We awarded the town all to Nequals. That could have gone a different way because West Webster Fire was doing a hardcore press, John, on you and I to not do it, correct? 
Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that well, because we, those those meetings were whatever from meeting day one. You knew the direction they were going. Meteorically fast. Meteorically fast. Sam, you're a businessman. There's a couple other people that I have talked to that that I've said I may need an ad hoc committee to help us vet this information quickly to make decisions. But the Nequals board needs to understand an Ahmed that you might be laying yourself out raw. We're going to need to look at it all. And I'm going to tell you something else on this one, okay? Forewarning Nequals and whatever, I know enough about accounting and how a company is structured. You know what I'm most interested in? That the people on the ground, the EMTs, are paid fairly and respectfully for what they do. I'm going to go right out and say it. I don't really care if the heavy brass up top is making six figures because they may need to have that cut. I don't know if that's the case with Nequals, but I've seen it at a lot of companies. Supervisor Nesbitt's right. The financials he saw, there's a profit. I'm still trying to figure out a non-for-profit can have no profit and it pay the executive director a million dollars a year. That can be a non-for-profit. I'm going to dissect those things. I'm going to find out what all the calls are. Medicare, Medicaid, transport, non-transport. I want to know if we're doing right by your mother, Sam, who might be 85. I hope she's still around. Please tell me she is. <laughs> and if we're doing right by the seven-year-old, if we're doing right by the worker who's 40 years old, who has a health savings account and pays the first 6000 they're deductible. Does everybody understand that? I think we I get, don't I, know I, if one I think they get the point, all. Tom. Do you think I get, John? I, I, I think they get the point. Do they? Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So stick around. There's a lot to come. <laughs> and thank you for coming. Now, the rest of the meeting should only take a few minutes, right? <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. All right. <laughs> no, you can't leave. This is when it gets exciting. Yeah. We're paying bills. You expect the point. I expect the call. Okay. You want help? I'm very helpful. Oh, don't think I wouldn't get you on that, especially a guy who hasn't had an ambulance district in a town that's like us. Now you explained it a little that you've been running for 30 years. I want to know more. Uh. Who was in? Oh, shoot. Please it's in your office oh, for an hour and a half. Holy smokes. I did review well, got, the bills. The minutes. Minutes uh, to okay. uh, uh, yay. I read the July 21st minutes. They look fine. I make a motion to approve them. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. John? <laughs> yes, I did review the bills, found them in order, and I move that we pay the bills. Second. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Nguyen? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And I reviewed the prepaid warrants as submitted by the Director of Finance, Paul Adams, and I make a motion we approve those. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Nguyen? Aye. Uh, the next two, Paul, uh, any, I mean, it's getting late. <laughs> next two are mine, uh, Tom. Uh, we have some uh, 2022 expenditure budget transfers. Uh, it's a number of housekeeping items, but it, it includes a $170,000 transfer within the Highway Park Town Fund for CHIPS road materials, uh, some payroll reclassifications, and utility and vehicle fuel charges are up, so we had to make some changes for that. Uh, that will be followed by a couple of budget amendments. Uh, the first amendment is basically to expand the budget so that we can utilize the ARPA funds uh, that we most recently we most recently received the second half of those funds. Uh, these budget transfers expand the budget to cover the cost of the grants that were given out to the nonprofit organizations and to cover the some of the initial cost to Navitas for the wastewater treatment plant phase two project. And then there's also an amendment uh, to expand the highway townwide budget. Um, as Pat Stevens explained during his budget presentation, 
They've been doing quite a bit of money, uh, quite a bit of work with Monroe County Parks. Uh, so they do have significant Monroe County revenue this year. Uh, so we're expanding the budget so that he can purchase a sweeper this year uh, at a cost of about $200,000. All right. Any questions? That's it. Okay. No. Uh, I make a motion to approve the 2022 budget transfers as presented by the Director of Finance. Second. Supervisor Flaherty. Aye. Councilwoman Wynn. Aye. Councilman Cahill. Aye. I make a motion to approve the 2022 budget amendment as presented by the Director of Finance. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty. Aye. Councilwoman Wynn. Aye. Councilman Cahill. Aye. And I make a motion to amend the 2022 highway budget to add two additional full-time laborers. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Uh, Want well, I me mean, just to Yes, please. Please. yes, okay. <laughs> this, um, <laughs> number five is, uh, is a request to approve the amount uh, submitted by Day Engineering, which is the environmental firm uh, contracted with and by the county. This is to uh, do a phase two environmental uh, review of uh, the property at 600, uh, 600 Ridge Road, which we've been working on for some time. Uh, in order for them to get in there, the county actually has to go to court, has to get uh, what's called incidents of ownership. They will then permit this group to go in on our behalf, on behalf of the town. They are not doing it on their own behalf. They're doing it because we have requested it. The amount of this is, we've got a 19-page uh, proposal, and uh, the, the total amount is as set forth, $22,211.65. So we're asking that in, in the event that the court proceeding goes ahead, and it's up to the county uh, law department to do that. Uh, we will then have an IMA to permit the uh, day engineering to go in, and we will pay for that. That's yeah. what we're seeking approval of right now. And and just to add to that, uh, Attorney Genesi and myself and uh, Deputy uh, Town Supervisor Patty Cataldi met with uh, some key people at the county last week, including Laura Smith and their legal department. And they're ready to start this process at the county legislator meeting on Tuesday, August 9th. And they'd like to have this from the town showing we mean business in layman terms. Yeah, I'm very familiar with what's going on here. So yeah. I have no problem. Yeah, and John, the only thing I'd say is that I was a little upset, and I'm speaking on your behalf. We went from, you know, 15 months ago, Logier had given us a quote of 12,000. The county's firm had 22,000. When you look at that proposal, there's a little bit more scope that the county <clears throat> wanted, and I, I can't really argue with them. And what are you going to do? Right. So it is what it is. We, we, yeah. we have no choice, unfortunately. No, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, Paul, we can, at a, a future meeting, mm -hmm. uh, Slot the twenty two thousand two eleven sixty five into yeah. you know whether because I think it's going to probably be ARPA because there's I yeah think it's an appropriate some, use of ARPA funds yeah because it oh, there, there's be complications to it coming from other sources uh, due to the mm -hmm. fact that it's whatever anyway yeah Jenny any questions no okay <laughs> do we need to have one of the not the supervisor but one of the other uh, yeah I, 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 you're right I, I, I would move to authorize the town of Webster to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Monroe County for the purpose of performing phase two environmental testing at 600 Ridge Road. The town will bear the cost of said testing for the amount of $22,211.65. Second. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Well, that's a milestone event in this uh, property's mm -hmm. uh, sure is. ignominious history. It'll be interesting to see the outcome of it. <laughs> you want to take bets? No. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to. No, I lose to you. All right. Paul, brief. Yeah. The, the next resolution is to close uh, capital project, uh, the Ridge Road sidewalk capital project. Um, actually should be project number 80217. I think this says 207. Uh, a couple of years back when the project was starting, general fund actually provided $501,000. Uh, 
to complete the project that was transferred into the capital projects fund. As it turns out, um, I think the original plan was to extend the sidewalks into the village. Yeah. Yes. They, they came up, they did not extend them that far. Mm -hmm. So the contract was reduced by about $154,000. Yeah. So we can, this is just to close the project and to transfer the remaining funds, uh, which are 126, 623, 12, back to general fund. Okay. Well, I make a, well, uh, any questions? No. Okay. Uh, motion to close capital project H0207 Ridge Road Sidewalks and transfer the remaining funds of $126,623.12 to the general townwide fund. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Charlie. Uh, Supervisor uh, and members of the board, this is uh, another request uh, to resolve a, uh, a series of uh, Article 7 tax certiorari cases. These are challenges to assessment. This is a, uh, this involves the, uh, the property Webster Woods Plaza, uh, which is, if you're familiar with it, at the, uh, the southwest corner of Ridge and Five Mile Line. The uh, litigation has gone on for nine years. And uh, of late, I, I've submitted a, a memo to the board, but just very briefly, of late, we, uh, we did engage a, uh, an appraiser to do just a number of years to get sort of get the lay of the land on this <coughs> to see where we were. And uh, after that was done, we concluded that uh, this would be a matter uh, cons to consider resolving um, without going to trial. And uh, in any event, we have, after a lot of intense negotiation, come up with a, uh, a, a proposed settlement, both the school district uh, and on their uh, client's behalf and, and uh, myself and the assessor on the town's behalf. In any event, we are seeking, and this is to pay off nine years, so the amount is, is, is probably the largest that I've ever requested of the board. Uh, the amount is uh, for, for parcel 803-809 Ridge Road is $28,923.80. And uh, for the parcel at 811 Ridge Road, it's 6,600, I'm sorry, $6,740.85 the total that we are requesting uh, the town board uh, to allocate in payment is 35664.65. Again, this is covering nine years of litigation and refunds. There is no interest or penalty, uh, assuming that both ourselves and the, and the school board approve. And um, that will put the, the, this matter to bed, or these matters to bed. So I am requesting that on behalf of the town. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Now we spoke about this earlier during the day, so I'm I'm aware of what's going on. And I just want to make sure I read the uh, resolution accurately. So I make a motion to approve the settlement of eight years of Article Seven tax certiorari litigation for two properties, specifically eight hundred three eight hundred nine Ridge Road for the tax years 2014 through 2022 for $28,923.80 and 811 Ridge Road for the tax years of 2015 through 2022 for $6,740.85, which settlement includes payment of refunds of property taxes. Right. That's actually it's nine years for for the for the bigger parcel mm -hmm. and, and eight years for the other parcel. But yes, effectively. Yes. Yeah, I just I, I will I will prepare a more detailed resolution. But what I just read, I picked up the years and the dollars, years and the dollars. So I think mm -hmm. that ticks and ties. Did you follow that, Jenny? Yep. Okay, John. Yes. So anybody want to second that motion? Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Paul. Me again. <laughs> uh, you again. The town just received the second payment uh, in ARPA funds. Uh, we got one in July of 2021. The second one just came in. So 
So now we have now received the complete amount. So this resolution just documents that uh, the town's accepting the funds and that they will be used to for revenue replacement. Uh, we're going to elect the standard allowance as provided by the final rule, and uh, we'll be able to spend the uh, the funds on general government services and. As you know, we've designated money for grants, 350000 two and a half million for the West, West Wastewater Treatment Plant Phase Two project, and be approximately another million two for other items. Any questions? No. Chad? No. Well, I make a motion to accept the funds totaling $4,050,859.61 in coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds in conjunction with the American Rescue Plan Act. Whereas the town has designated these amounts for replacement of revenue loss and has elected the standard allowance, which allows the funds to be spent on government services through the period of performance which is December 31st, 2026. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Well, we came in like a lion, we'll go out like a lamb tonight, huh? Unless anybody has any questions on this uh, next one, I am going to make a motion to declare the following items for transfer from the assessing department to the town clerk's office. A two two-door fireproof filing cabinet asset tag 003197. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Now, based on Councilman Cahill's yawn, and since we have been here since 4.30, I hope that the people at home don't get upset that I'm not going to open the lines and we'll do a roundabout. I think this board and the, and the rest of the people, Barton heads, deserve to, to probably go home now, wouldn't you say, Dolly? This meeting is officially adjourned. Good night.